Good morning. I have some excellent third and fourth graders to introduce you to. These are the students of Walker Elementary here at Sci Fair ISD in Katy. exciting morning everybody so we'd like to talk to you guys about the weather and I have some very important things to talk to you about with our changing weather pattern that's coming in the next two to three days so let's start by talking about what makes our weather so first of all our weather is changing over the next several days it's been really warm and humid haven't seen any rain just yet but that's about to change so we're going from warm and humid to stormy stormy over the next couple of days and so first of all, our weather starts with the sun. All our weather is driven by the sun. That's whether it's sunny or not, whether it's cloudy, all the weather that we get on the earth starts with the sun. A couple things about the sun. The sun is 100 times larger than the earth. The sun is 93 million miles away from us. It takes eight minutes and 20 seconds from the light from the sun to reach us here on the earth which means if you go outside right now you are walking around in old sunlight that sunlight has already been gone for eight minutes and 20 seconds or a different way to look at that is when the sun sets when you see that last part of the sun go down that sun has actually been gone for eight minutes and 20 seconds that's how long it takes the light to get here so we're always walking around in old light so let's talk about the changes now that are going to happen with our weather. It has been warm and sunny, but now what's about to happen, especially tomorrow, is that it's going to start out sunny, but then the clouds are going to start to build up. This is called convection. And because it's cold up here, because an area of low pressure is moving in, you're going to see the clouds build up, it's going to start to rain, and then we're going to see lightning. So this heat is created through liquid and gases, but it starts with the sun. Does everybody understand that? I'm going to show you an example here in just a second. High and low pressure. The last couple of days, we have had high pressure over us in Katy. Tomorrow, we have low pressure starting to move in in the form of a front. So wind travels, first of all, from high pressure to low pressure. So if you ever wonder why it's windy or where wind comes from, it comes from the differences in pressure in the atmosphere. So it starts with high pressure and it goes to low pressure. That's how the wind moves. So air pressure is the weight of a column of air above the surface. So when you have high pressure, that air sinks, it's heavy. When you have low pressure, that air is light and it rises. So I need my first volunteers of the day. I want one third grader, one fourth grader, and one fifth grader. So now I know where the third graders are, right? Your third, come on up. I need a fifth grader, okay, right there in the yellow, come on up. And then I need a fourth grader. All the fourth graders, raise your hand um, right here, come on up, yeah. Let's start, come next to me. We're gonna start with high pressure, third grader, right? Okay, what's your name? Aiko. Everybody say hi to Aiko. We are going to demonstrate this concept of high and low pressure. So high pressure, when it's sunny like today, you have air sinking. High pressure is heavy. So Aika is going to help. Aika, right? Aika. 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 Say it again. Aika. Aika. Okay, so I'm saying a little wrong at the end. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is high pressure. Does everyone see it? High pressure sinks. It comes down. Again, high pressure. This is sinking the air, that air is heavy. Try to lift that. To lift it straight up, not sideways at an angle, but try to lift it. No, 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 the, by the, by that, yep. Okay. Got it. But it was, it was hard, right? It was hard because that high pressure is sinking. So what's happening here with this demonstration is you have air trapped down here. So air pre high pressure is sinking this air, it's trapped, and the air under this can't be lifted. Let's try someone else here. Come on up, what's your name? Jacob. Jacob, okay, lift that. Okay, it's tough. How tough was that? Uh, pretty tough. Pretty tough. Does everyone understand what high pressure does? Yeah. 
So pretend there's a cloud under this. If there's a cloud trying to build up, is it easy for that cloud to build up? No. No, the cloud can't do it. What's your name? Delilah. Delilah? Okay. Lift it. Did you see how the bench went up? So on a day where high pressure's in control, how hard is it to get rain? It's really tough because clouds can't build up. Everybody give our volunteers a round of applause. Okay, you guys can sit down. Now, let's demonstrate low pressure. I need a new third, fourth, and fifth grader. So let's see. Uh, third, right, come on up. Fifth, come on up. Right there, fifth, yeah. And then fourth, how about Hello Kitty? Hello Kitty, okay. Where did, okay, we got everybody? Okay. What's your name? Kaylani. Delani? No, Kaylani. Kaylani. Oh my gosh, I can't hear or pronounce things today. Okay, Kaylani, can you see, it's hard to see, can you see what the temperature is? It's in Celsius, what the temperature is in this bottle. No, I can't see it. You can't see it? If I turn it around, how about now? Okay. Can you guys see what the temperature is in this bottle? I'm trying to get it to where you can see it. You can hold it and move it around if you can. It's, it's in Celsius and you should see a number there. 20 or 22? Okay, 20 or 22. 20 or 22 degrees Celsius. Everybody got that? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a cloud. So I'm going to put some water in here. What's your name? Emma. Everyone say hi to Emma. Hi, Emma. Emma, I want you to squeeze that, okay? Do like three or four squeezes, okay? Got it? Okay, you do a couple more. What's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer, go ahead and squeeze squeeze it. You gotta use all your muscles. I need you to be really strong here. Okay. Got it? Okay. Do a couple more. Can you, are you having a hard it's hard now, right? It's kind of like when you were trying to lift that. Try it. Okay, I think a couple more. Got it? Okay. Now I want you to look at the number. What's the number you see in there? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So we've increased the heat in here. So we put water in, we've increased the heat, and so now what should happen is we're going to allow low pressure to lift out of here. Because we put in three to four drops of water, what should happen is a cloud should form and form out. So what's happening? It's gotten warmer, we're allowing the pressure to go out, the pressure's gonna come up, and let's see if we can get some convection or a cloud to build up. So does everybody understand low pressure, how it happens? Big round of applause. Good job, guys, good job. But this, this leads me to something very important that I need to tell you. And it's where we live, and especially here where we live in Katy. We flood really easy. These are pictures of flooding in neighborhoods like us. And the number one thing I want you to leave with today, more than high pressure, low pressure, it's don't play in flooded water. We on the news, I many times have heard or had to tell stories, awful stories, about kids your age getting really hurt because they're doing something like this. This is the worst thing I've ever seen anybody do. First of all, these are two kids. They're hard to see because they have white shirts on with the white water, and they're hydroplaning on the back of a truck. This kid, who looks like he's in about fifth, maybe sixth grade, is videotaping them. This kid is hanging out the side of the truck, and these cars are following behind trying to get home. This is incredibly dangerous. Now, I'll tell you, nothing went wrong in this picture. The kids held on. These guys were smart and didn't go into it, but they sent me this picture and said, I can't believe these kids are doing it. So don't ever do things like this. There's always different scenarios, but the number one thing is don't play in flooded water because there's about a thousand things that can go wrong in this picture. Does everyone understand that? Yes. And there's things that can go wrong in other ways. Without answering, everyone look at this and in your mind, think about what this is. This is flooded water there's something floating on top of flooded water. 
If you're playing in flooded water and you come against this, you know what you're hitting? Ants. So ants are like me. They hate getting wet. And so what ants do when there's a flood and there's a flood on top of their ant hill is the least important ants get together and they lock their arms with tentacles. The ones that are a little more important get on top of them. The ones that are a little more important get on top of them. And there it goes. And all of a sudden they have this island. You know what's most important to ants? What? The babies. Do you see the eggs at the very top? And of course the queen. So you don't want to do that. And also in some, in a few years, a lot of years, you're going to be driving. And for all the teachers in the room, don't drive in water if you don't know how deep it is. I show this picture because I don't know the answer. I don't know if this is two inches, two feet, or this is a bridge that's out and that's a 20 foot drop. I don't know. And if I don't know, and if you don't know, don't drive through that. Because some big cars can make it when it floods. Some big cars can't. Water's powerful. This kid looks just like you guys. He's your age. It's not only moving him, it's moving his dad's truck. That's how powerful water is. Two feet of water will make your car float, but our cars aren't meant to float. So when they get water in the engine on an old vehicle like this, you've now caused two to $4,000 worth of damage. You also, with flooding or rain, get thunderstorms. If you hear thunder, get inside right away. The safest place to be is your home, school, or car. We're in a great place if there's thunderstorms because lightning will hit, the electricity will go on the outside, and we're all safe. We're in a bad place if a tornado's coming because there's a lot of glass around, but we're not talking about tornadoes. We're talking about lightning. So this is a safe place. We're inside. That's the safest place you can be. This is a slowed down image of a lightning strike. I showed this, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on it. Lightning forms, especially on a day like tomorrow, where it'll start clear like, like this morning, you're going to see the clouds build up, just like we did it, showed it in the bottle. As the clouds build up, you're going to eventually get rain. If you have high pressure, none of this happens. Low pressure, you do. There's your rain, there's your lightning. That's how lightning forms. It's a lot like a battery. So for batteries, you have your positive and your negative. The atmosphere is always trying to balance itself. So I could stand here in front of you like this all day long. I would get hungry, I would get tired, but I could plant my two feet and I could stand here and you guys would have lunch and you'd be all around me and then I'd be really bored. But if I do this, I am now out of balance. And eventually to get my balance, what am I gonna have to do? Drop my leg and here's my lightning strike. Lightning, balance. And then I get unstable again, balance, lightning. So that's what thunderstorms are doing. The atmosphere is trying to balance itself. It can't because you have these positive and negative ions that are going around and it's imbalancing the atmosphere. So a little different than low pressure creating clouds and rain, now we have an imbalance in the atmosphere. So don't be outside. Here we are outside playing. Here come some thunderstorms. There's your imbalance and boom. There you are, right? Don't play outside in thunderstorms. <laughs> Never stand under tall trees. If you're like me and you're like ants, you don't like getting wet. So did you know that most people who get hurt by lightning strikes are under a tree because they're trying to stay dry? And you don't even have to be touching the tree. You could be under the tree off to the side and do you see how the electrical current is going out? That's how a lot of people get hurt. They're like, oh, as long as I don't touch the tree, or they think, as long as I have rubber shoes on, that does not protect you. That's how powerful lightning is. It is safe in your car. If you're with your parents, your grandparents, and you're driving around, and lightning hits your car, you're fine. It might mess up your electrical system a little bit, like the radio, but it's not gonna hurt you with the car coming by because your car is going to move the metal around. You'll learn about this when you get into mid-school science. Um, or high school science, it's called a Faraday cage. If you put metal, or not metal, put electricity in a car, the current goes outside the car, and then it goes through the tires into the ground, but it's the metal that's protecting you. It's not your tires, it's the metal. Okay, we've got a little more than 10 minutes left. Another slow motion of lightning. If you see that, and it takes 10 seconds for that lightning strike to be heard with thunder, you hear thunder 10 seconds later, 
how far away is this lightning strike? I'm going to take just two, two, exa two people questions here. Yes, how far? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Yes, real loud. It's really close, but in miles, how close? But really close. Ten seconds goes by. How close? If you know the answer, yes. Yep. It's ten miles. So every second is one mile. So that lightning strike is ten miles away. It is actually two miles away. Every five seconds that goes by, one, two, three, four, five, is one mile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is two miles. So while you may think thunder's far away or lightning's far away, it's actually pretty close because if that storm is five, uh, one mile away, that's just right there. That's really close, but it took five seconds for the sound to get to you because sound waves move really slow. Okay, how big is white lightning? Big, as far as wide, not sky to ground. How wide is it? How big is lightning? Let's come over here. If you know the answer, tell me. I'll just take a couple of answers here. Yes, how big? How big? Maybe four feet. Four feet? Okay, what's your name? Aiden. Aiden says four feet. Yes, how big is lightning? Yeah, real loud. I can't hear what you say. Six feet, okay? Six feet. Four, six feet. Last guess. Right there, yes. How wide? We got four feet. We got six feet. We have five feet. Four to six feet is what you guys all guessed. Lightning is three quarters of an inch. If you could catch lightning, you could hold it in your hand just like that. Okay, we're, uh, we're going to run out of time here, so I need somebody to help me. Um, I need a, it needs to be a specific person. Oh my gosh, you guys all have your hair a certain... Okay, come on up. Yep. Okay, what's your name? Hadley. Hadley? Hadley. Hadley. Ha I'm sorry. Hadley. I did have her. Okay, Hadley. Everyone say hi to Hadley. Adley has a particular hair type I was looking for. So Hadley, if she's outside and she's playing in the rain and then all of a sudden there's lightning nearby, you know what will happen to Hadley? Yes! Her hair is going to stand straight up. Oops, sorry. She has hair on her arms. This hair is going to stand up. Why? Everyone give her a big round of applause. Because some lightning strikes go down and some lightning strikes go up also. So it's called a streamer leader. In slow motion, what you're seeing here, there's a tree, there's Hadley, right? Hadley? And what's happened, do you see how the electrical current's going up and then it meets in the air? So what's happened to Hadley is that basically lightning is pictured as a target. And the, the electrical current's starting to come up from the ground, through her feet, through her hair and the lightning strike's gonna be here. So what should you not, where should you not be during a thunderstorm? Yeah. Outside, so you don't have to worry about that. How hot is lightning? On a day like today, we're 86 degrees. That's us on the Earth. The sun, the surface of the sun, is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. A lightning strike is 50,000 degrees. How powerful is lightning? Okay, are you guys ready to watch your friends do the weather live? So here's how I forecast the weather. I have to look at radar. Radar is going to be really active over the next couple of days. I have satellite images that show snow, clouds, and rain. This is bad. I'm not expecting this tomorrow, but if I saw this, this would be really bad. This is called a hook echo. That's where a tornado would be. And then we have recording stations. So for example, in Katy, and you're going to see a recording station first on this map that your students are going to show, is what's the temperature? What's the humidity? What's the wind speed here in Katy? I know that by different recording stations. I have surface maps that I look at to predict the weather in the future. So do you remember us talking about high pressure and low pressure? Yes. Here's high pressure. Are there any clouds under that high pressure? Because that's a strong high pressure area. 
Do you, do you see low pressures up here? Do you see a lot of clouds and rain? Yes. Um, again, now you look at models, and this goes out in the future. And you can actually pick where the area of high pressure is just by looking at where the rain is. I also look outside. If the rock is wet, it's raining. If the rock is swaying, it's windy. If the rock is hot, it's sunny. If the rock is cool, it's overcast. If the rock is white, it's snowing. If the rock is blue, it's cold. If the rock is gone, tornado. And then I make the graphics. And then I go on the green screen, and I do my job. And now it's your students' turn. So if your students could come up, if our students could come on up. You're going to do the weather for your school and city. You're going to give the current temperatures. What's the weather today? And what is happening tomorrow? Okay, what's your name? Daylin Allen. Okay, you're first. Okay, notice it already looks different. Do you see how it looks different? So, you got, you're ready? You're going to get in the middle. You're going to introduce yourself. We're going to stand off to the side, and then we're next. Okay, when you see the maps change, you're ready to go. Okay? Okay, so we're good. Hello, my name is Jalen Allen, and I'm in my fourth grader at Walker Elementary. Okay, so that they haven't switched over to the graphics yet, but once they do, you can start talking. So until then, you can tell us a story. <laughs> story. You don't know any stories? No. There you go. Oh, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so we're at here, I'm gonna get you back to where we should be. Okay, it's all you, it's all you. Okay, so today right now in Katy, it is 82 degrees with a, no chance of cloudy. It's not cloudy right now. The humidity is going to be 74 degrees. Wind is headed south, east, and 15 miles per hour. It's wind gust. How do I get to this show? Right now, the satellite is catching rain. Right now, somewhere near Dallas and somewhere near El Paso. Right now, but it's not headed our way, so it's gonna be sunny today. No chances of rain. On Wednesday, it has a 20% chance of rain with 86 degrees high, warm and humid. On Thursday, it's going to be having 60% chance of rain and also 86% Fahrenheit. You might want to have your umbrellas. And then, <laughs> on Friday, it's, have, it's gonna, it's gonna be 30 degrees, no, it's gonna be 30, I'm going to have 30 chances of rain, and it's going to be 86 degrees with the few showers. That's excellent. Excellent job. You did great. You did great. Okay. You ready? Oh, let me get the graphics back. Okay. Let's get you in front of the green screen. Remember, you introduce yourself. Oh, do you want to? You can switch hands, whatever's more comfortable for you. Okay, okay, you're ready. Okay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Alina, um, Alina Awan. I go to Walker Elementary and I am in fifth grade. Um, it's 74 chance of okay, rain. there it is. And it's 82 degrees. We lost it. No way. I just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. How's it going? I don't know what to do. That's press, the, press the middle button, it'll go to the next graphic. Okay, so now you talk about the next thing. Okay, yep. Okay, there you go. So it looks like it's going to be raining. And, um,. I can't see. You can't see? So just look look at that. It's, it's, it's showing you and what you look like. So what they're seeing is exactly what you're seeing. So you just, yep. And then just click the button. If you have nothing to say here, you just click the button and you can show the forecast for tomorrow. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be raining in Dallas. 
On Wednesday, it's going to be 20% of chance of rain and it's 86 degrees. On Thursday, it's going to be a 50 chance of rain and 86 degrees also. Okay. Good job. Good job. Okay, ready? Let me get back. Okay, you're all set. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, my name is Hazel, and I, I am a fifth grader in Walker Elementary. Today, it's 82 degrees outside, 74% chance of humanity, and in southeast, it's 15, um, humanity, I think it. It, it's raining in, is that Dallas? Yeah, is near it? Dallas, yep. In near Dallas, and it's a little far away from Houston. Today it has 20% chance of raining. It's 86 degrees outside. And Thursday, it is going to be have a 60% chance of rain and 86 it's going to be 86 degrees okay good job hey you guys thank you so much can you guys all say goodbye can you guys all say goodbye